Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I am going to be looking at the KSP Interstellar mod by Fractal UK. Now, what we are looking at here is a science lab, and this was important that I look at this before the actual science uh, system gets into the actual game. This is a science lab which allows you to research high-end, um, high I don't know, propulsion and energy generation. Now, it uh, takes a couple of crew, as we'll uh, put a couple of crew in there. Let's fill that up with a uh, gurgle and rich tree now uh, what else does it need it needs well it needs power so to power this up we're gonna give it a what we're gonna do is use a nuclear reactor now what they do in this is instead of having a unit which basically generates power you can you know, mix and match so you can take uh, antimatter reactors and combine that with an electric generator but uh, more realistically to start with you're gonna start with a nuclear reactor and the probably the smallest you can use is a 1.25 uh, meter nuclear reactor so let's stick that on the top there similarly i will match that up with a 1.25 meter nu uh, electric generator it tells you the efficiency is 24 percent so maximum thermal power is 5000 megawatts which seems like quite a lot um furthermore let's put some heat radiators on this because that will ultimately matter but right now i'm not sure if it does matter let's put a couple of these on and let's put four of them on so it kind of looks cool okay so we have the basis of a spacecraft here let's also attach um this computer core module or something just so it doesn't complain that i don't have anything powering everything okay so crew's ready we are no crew's not ready what is happening here okay now we're gonna launch this science lab will basically sit on the launch pad and generate science. And science will ultimately upgrade some of the other parts. So now we have Rich Ray and Gurgle and the, oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to IVA, not EVA. Great, get in there. Get in there. Bored, okay. IVA, there we go. Look, we can see the magnificent interior. This is a beautifully rendered interior here with lots of rack mounted goodies and stuff 666 uh oh we have the the number of the devil in the science system we have our friend there and we have some numbers running so these guys are going to do some research for us let's uh, come out of here right click and and watch the research build up very very slowly don't run out science there look we get 0 0.01 science Eventually, that science will be able to be downloaded to our labs. Well, just across there, basically. And they will be able to improve various items. Now, for example, if I right-click on this, it tells us that it will, to upgrade the electric generator, it will take 200 science. To upgrade this nuclear reactor, it will take 120. Clearly, it will take some time. But... This is Kerbal Space Program, so if I go to the Space Center, we can take a look at a, a lab which I've placed in orbit around another celestial body, and we will be able to see. And here we are in orbit around Moho, yes, the brown potato in space, and we are generating science. You see all the, the heat radiators deployed now? We have our um, solid core reactor. This is a bigger one. It's generating more power. Probably a good plan. And it is generating 1.321 per day. That is uh, 13 times as much. Lucky for some. And this is actually 600 kilometers out. If I right click on this. Hold on. Let's right click. And as we orbit closer. Watch the science rate will actually uh, increase. Until we get to some very high level. So we could in theory put our spacecraft into a lower orbit. And we'll be making more research. And ultimately... Uh, advancing our science a whole lot more by watching this. Look at that, 15 science units now. We can just keep going, leave this in orbit. Of course, this is Kerbal Space Program. We can just time accelerate and just watch this thing build up science. Uh, leave it running overnight. Learn all about the secrets of the universe. That is the way science is done. You let other people that know what they're doing do it. You don't write opinion pieces claiming that scientists don't know what they're talking about. 
it does happen, trust me. Okay, so what this is all about, of course, is alternative forms of propulsion. I haven't shown you that just yet, so let's get over to the Space Center and we'll actually look at some other bits and pieces in the hangar. So what we have here is an aircraft which is going to be driven by a nuclear-powered thermal turbojet. A thermal tur turbojet is kind of the atmospheric equivalent of a nuclear engine. And uh, what you do is, you, in this case, you attach it to a nuclear reactor. And I've also attached a power generator here. And uh, the idea, of course, is it heats the atmosphere and exhausts it out the back and you have an aircraft. Now, kind of problems with this in, the, uh, in this mod is that nuclear reactors are actually quite heavy. I mean, that's to be expected. They have uh, a lot of shielding, no doubt, and various other things. But I can actually just about get this thing into the air. Which is nice. Now, because of its nature, this thing should work on any planet with an atmosphere. So you can fly around on EVE. It will just use the local atmosphere. It doesn't use intakes. I couldn't get it to work with actual intakes. So it's just magically and not sucking the air in somehow and exhausting it out. The uh, mod does actually include uh, various nuclear rockets as well. So you can literally roll your own nuclear engine if you like. You can decide what fuel you're going to use with it. You can decide, decide how big a reactor you're going to have. And yeah, you can you know basically roll your own. Now, if we travel out to the moon, we have another vehicle here that's using another unorthodox propulsion method. Uh, this is a rather wide base on it because it, I've had to stack basically a nuclear power system, uh, a science lab, and this large rocket that looks something like a solid rocket booster, but it is in fact something that is called an aluminium oxygen hybrid rocket, or aluminum if you happen to be American. So the idea is that, uh, in case you didn't know, aluminium does actually burn, it's quite reactive, and indeed um, you use out powdered aluminium in uh, thermite to, uh, you know, to make thermite react. But uh, you can in fact make a rocket out of it. It has been tested in fact. You can mix aluminium with, or powdered aluminium with liquid oxygen, and of course you have to keep that thing cool with liquid nitrogen, but that thing will combust quite efficiently. Now a hybrid rocket of course is one where the propellant is solid, but the oxidizer is liquid, so you can pass the oxidizer through the engine and you can throttle the whole thing, you can turn the power up or down. And uh, the most well-known hybrid rocket is of course the one used in Spaceship One. It uh, uses kind of a rubber fuel and uh, nitrous oxide as its oxidizer. Now the advantage of this, of the aluminium oxide thing, is that you can actually refine it on the lunar surface in this case. You can take rocks from the moon, or the moon, and uh, you can heat them up, you can apply electrolysis and generate aluminium and oxygen and refuel your spacecraft on the surface, which is nice because you can have this rocket that uh, refuels itself on the lunar surface. It'll also work on Ike, apparently. I'm not sure if there's any others where it could work on, like uh, Tylo might be an obvious choice, but uh, I, you know, being on the moon is kind of nice nevertheless. And of course I've got this science lab which can generate lots of research while it's out there. Now, moving on, we come to the warp drive. This is actually the start. This is the main thing this kind of mod started with. And the problem is there's a lot of warp drive mods in Kerbal Space Program, and almost all of them are totally overpowered. This is the first non-overpowered warp drive mod that is in the game. So what you have here, you've got to generate a lot of power. You basically need to run this until you're generating exotic matter. And uh, you can just plug some reactors together and sit on the launch pad and it'll generate you know, a lot of power and eventually you'll have enough to enter warp. And off you go. You go instantly to the speed. Now it says 10% of the speed, or 0.1c, but I think they've reduced what the speed of light actually is to something... Um, more acceptable for Kerbal scale. So, but we move off almost instantaneously, flying off, and you can see a Kerbin behind me receding into the distance. And my uh, exotic matter quanti or my exotic matter fuel is slowly falling away. You can see it's a ring design mirroring the Alcubarra's uh, warp drive design, uh, which, you know. Is, is somewhat controversial or somewhat interesting because it, it in theory works but everybody likes to point out reasons why it shouldn't work and then 
people keep on pointing out reasons why they can circumvent these problems. I, I somehow doubt that such a thing will ever be built and function, but it will be fascinating if somebody can replicate something of its effect. But anyway, we'll continue on flying towards Jewel, and eventually we get there without actually needing to use much in the way of time acceleration. However, when we turn off the warp drive, we find that we are going rather fast with respect to Joule because what happens is we maintain our original uh, velocity when we left, when we entered warp. So it doesn't affect your velocity. And this is why it is not overpowered. You get to the target and then you still have to match velocities. Uh, that can be a major problem. Moving swiftly on, we come to the final spacecraft in this little cavalcade of um, technologies. This is uh, in low dual orbit right now. It is, well, it's quite well, a huge spacecraft in this case. It has uh, a lot of thermal radiators. It has a pair of large 3.5 meter nuclear reactors powering everything here. And uh, those are needed because right now I do not have all the science research in place to upgrade them. Therefore, I'm not hugely efficient. Uh, now, it is possible to power this particular engine here if you have just one of each of these, if you have them upgraded, but I'm not so lucky. This is a deuterium tritium pellet nuclear engine thingy. What it does is it basically fires a little pellet of deuterium and tritium, hits it with a bunch of lasers, and then it explodes in a nuclear explosion, releases energy and a lot of radiation. That is why when I try to use it, uh, it will tell me that I can't use it because there's the, there's a radiation hazard, basically. So you have to get all your kerbals inside the spacecraft before you can actually try firing it. Um, now, the other thing that's on this, the other reason I'm here, is because I want to collect some antimatter. Now, if you remembered, I was saying that the warp drive, I had to leave it sitting around for you know time acceleration for a long time so that I could actually generate enough power to or enough exotic matter to make my warp drive work well if you want to make it work consistently you of course need antimatter just like the starship enterprise matter anti-matter annihilation with the help of some dilithium crystals well there's a bunch of ways to actually make antimatter well, actually no there's two ways to make antimatter in the um in the expansion in the mod one is you can collect it from space using these little antimatter scoops. And the place you find lots of antimatter is in magnetic fields, just like the Van Allen belts. You see, cosmic rays will get trapped by planetary magnetic fields. They're like a big, giant magnetic bottle. And you can see that I am slowly collecting it here. However, I can also uh, use the lab to start generating power and then turn that power into... Uh, you know, use a particle accelerator to generate matter and antimatter. That's a ridiculously inefficient thing to do, but uh, it is actually the only way we realistically know to manufacture antimatter at this time. The problem with antimatter is that every single way of producing it or acquiring it is incredibly complicated and inefficient at this time. So the, the question as to whether antimatter will ever be used as a propulsion system is... Um, definitely one that I would not answer this early in our civilization, let's say. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, the game models magnetic fields for all the planets, so you can go to different planets and try to find the strongest magnetic field to contain it and harvest the antimatter, so you can power your antimatter reactors. This whole thing is pointing to, you know, a huge set of videos that I should probably do. Uh, but only if people are interested, so, uh, you know, express your interest or thereabouts in the comments section. Uh, the mod is Interstellar Mod by Fractal UK. It is downloadable from the forums. It's not on Kerbal Spaceport yet. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.